Hello and welcome back to E39 Source. This is Ryan in my 2000 M5 and today's video is kind of one just playing around. We're going to focus on replacing the existing light control module in this car and then coating it with BMW PA Soft or uh, BMW Scanner 1.4. Now I'm going to say at the top here that this video does not support installing, setting up, using PA Soft. I'm not responsible for anything that you code or break on your car with the software. Um, the coding portion of this video is for those of you who already have PA Soft running and working with your cars. I can't help you with that. It took me, in fact, about two years to figure out how to get it to work. It's extremely sensitive. It is annoying to get working. Once you have it working, it is fantastic. You can do a ton with these cars and programming and coding and diagnosing. Um, all sorts of stuff. So why change the LCM? Well, this car is a 2000, February 2000 to be exact. So as just many of you know, it did not come with these taillights. In fact, there's a video on the channel of me installing these taillights about seven, six, seven years ago. It's been quite a while. They are genuine Hella, which is the original equipment supplier for BMW, European style um, taillights specifically made for the 2000 models to facelift, to update them. Uh, they're a little bit shallower. You do have to pound the light buckets out and then there's ballasts in the trunk that adapt the original 2000 tail light connector, which is different than the 01 plus to the 01 plus style connector. And you see that big box down there. That is the hella ballast that allows them to function. Now, the ballasts work fine and they don't weigh very much and they don't take up any space and there's really no negative with them. But if I can do away with them, that's part one of my reason to upgrade the LCM light control module. Part two would be to have the ability to add in the future automatic headlights. Uh, 2001 plus ish, maybe the 02 plus M5s came with automatic headlights. And what that means is see at 12 o'clock, the 12 o'clock position there on the headlight switch is just off. There would be an 11 o'clock position with a little A in it that would indicate automatic mode. And that means they come on when it gets dark and they turn off when you turn off the car or the sun comes back out. Well, how does it know how dark it is? There's a sensor up here in the windshield. The one in this car, this is the original sensor. Uh, it's called an RS, a rain sensor. It is responsible for sensing rain for the use of automatic windshield wipers. Very useful. Now the 01 or 02 plus cars that got automatic headlights replace the RS with an RLS, the L standing for light. So the rain sensor turns into a rain light sensor. So that would need to change uh, to facilitate retrofitting automatic headlights. So those are my two reasons. Delete the tail light ballasts. BMW actually makes an adapter cable, that real short little stubby connector that will adapt your 2000 tail light harness connector to the 01 plus connector. And then we would just delete the ballast out of here completely. Um, so I'll get those adapters. I'll leave the part numbers in the description below if you happen to be doing the same thing that, uh, that I am eventually. I don't have the adapters yet. Today I'm just going to be installing the light control module and, and programming it. Um, why do we have to program it or code it? Well, the mileage in these cars is written to three different places and it's constantly compared against one another. And if there's a discrepancy of more than a certain percentage, um, a tamper dot comes on, on the um, instrument cluster right next to the trip odometer under there where it says miles, miles 27.4 under miles, there's a dot. If that dot comes on, that means there's a discrepancy. So the mileage is firstly written to the DME or the ECU, the engine control unit, which is in the electronics box here on the passenger side under the cabin air filter box. That's the first place the mileage goes. Then it also comes over here to the IKE or the instrument cluster. It's written in there. And the third and final place the mileage is stored is the light control module. So when replacing the light control module with a used part, you have to reprogram the mileage to it. Otherwise you will have the tamper dot. The second thing we need to code on the new light control module will be the VIN number. The VIN number is coded in many different modules on the car. As you probably know, the VIN is visible down here under the wiper, or if you open your driver's door, it'll be right there on the B pillar on that sticker. So we'll need to code or program the last seven digits of the VIN to the new used light control module. Now, if you go to a BMW dealer, and you tell them you want to upgrade your LCM, they'll be happy to sell you one for $4,000 or something crazy. And it'll be a new one, and they will program it and code it to your car, and it'll be hunky-dory if you're willing to spend that much money. Uh, if you bring them a new used one, a used one, uh, they will not code that for you and they will tell you that it cannot be done and this just is not the case You can do it yourself as I've said you need the software running and working and I know I'm spending a lot of time telling you all of this But I think it's important to understand how it works and what the limitations are and if you don't have the software 
don't want to have the software, can't use it, just forget it because it's it's a pain to set up. If you're uh, computer savvy, tech savvy, you need Windows. This is a MacBook Pro that also runs Windows in a virtual machine and that works fine. Um, so that's what we're going to be using. So first thing we're going to do is just the physical job of removing the existing light control module and installing the new one. And the light control module is right down here in the passenger footwell back in here. If you were to cut a hole right here in the chassis, you would see it. So we need to do some uh, minor interior trim disassembly. Nothing crazy here. We barely need any tools. First thing I like to do is just roll the passenger seat all the way back. That's nice and easy. Gives us some room. Second thing we're going to do is remove the passenger um, ceiling cover, trim panel, whatever that is. If you feel over here, there's a round hole that your finger fits in perfectly. Pull it towards you about an inch and out. And it's just held in with these two little arms, one here and one right on the other side, and they go on this metal rod that the glove box attaches to with these nuts. Uh, then in the back, see that slot there and slot there fits on the white plastic, kind of grooves in there um, on the electronics box back there. So we have this out of the way, get it out of the way, so we're safe. Then the next thing we need to remove is this black sill strip here and it's not held in with any hardware there's three tabs or clips that hold it in there's one over here there's one in the middle and there's another one here so the easiest way to do this is just get your fingers under it in the back and just mightily pull straight up and it'll pop right out generally the um, fastening hardware will stay in the holes in the chassis at that point you can just grab some pliers or a pry tool and pull them up and then slide them back in the channel that'll be on this piece so let me do that off camera and I'll show you what this looks like this is the underside of that trim panel and the groove there is kind of hard to see but the uh, clips just slide right in there and they stayed as I predicted in the chassis these white ones here I've just had luck with using a tool like this to get under them and pry them out and then as I've said they're just gonna slide right back in the groove and we'll move that one to the far end and remove the next one put it in the middle and remove the last one and put it over here the next trim we need to remove is this little black cover right here and it's kind of held in with similar clips to the piece we just removed, the sill strip. Uh, there's a total of two. There's one in this general area and then one way up here at the top that's just kind of touched by the glove box. And we just need to get our hands back behind it and pull. You heard the first one release. We'll come down to the bottom, find where it's the tightest, and pull there. And that's the second one. And this thing comes off and they are actually uh, the same clips, I believe, that hold the door panels onto the door and they look like that. So we have this out of here, I'm gonna get this out of the way in a moment. We can peel the carpeting back. These yellow wires, before you give me too much crap, are for when I retrofit rear fog lights. So I ran these back to the uh, tail lights and then pinned them into the LCM. So we'll clean this up a little bit better today, zip tie the wires with the rest of the loom, and uh, that's the LCM. You see the white connector right there? That's the bottom one. There's a total of three connectors on the light control module. The only thing holding it in the car outside of the wires is a eight millimeter brass bolt down here at the bottom and you may need to pull the wires out of the way to see it, put a nut driver on it, put a socket on it, whatever, and release the eight millimeter bolt. Inside the air conditioning now, a little bit less noise. I apologize for the fan noise out there, but it's a hot one here in California today. Uh, these are what light control modules look like. The one on the left is an LCM 3B it's real easy to look at the sticker on these and determine what the part number is, the hardware version, and the software level. So hardware C1, software level 43, the part number ends in 454, and that's an LCM 3B. This one over here is a different sticker. These things are all made by Lear, but this one says LCM 4, auto LWR. What does that mean? Well, the 4 is obviously newer than the 3. This one is actually out of a March of 2003 produced E39 M5. This one over here is out of a, I believe, September or October of 01 car. It was the first car we got, that sterling gray um, E39. So uh, these are both donors. I actually spent a bunch of time on this yesterday, swapping this one into the car, and I was unsuccessful. Uh, with this light control module to get the headlights to level again because this one has auto LWR. So LWR is the act of uh, adjusting the headlights vertically, up and down. If you put two or three adults in the back seat, the back of the car sits a little bit lower and now the headlights are pointed up in the trees. So what it does is move the motors down to keep them pointed down. If 
the front of the car were loaded down. Now the headlights are too low, so it points them up. There's a separate module for that that I actually have here in our parts inventory called the LRA, and it is responsible for moving the headlights around. And it's back behind the glove box, and this is what an LRA looks like. It says LWR, so maybe that's the name of the module here. Now, M5s that have the LCM2, the LCM3, and the 3B all have this module. Your super late production model M5s like the O3s, they do not have that module, and it's built in the LCM. So when I installed this one yesterday and successfully programmed the mileage and uh, VIN to the, to the module, I was unable to make this thing work with the headlights. For whatever reason, I just could not uh, get the options configured right to ignore the LWR in here and to use that other module. So today, I'm just going to say screw it. I don't need the 4. That's the only thing it does over the 3, and I just don't need that feature since I already have uh, that other module in the car. So I'm going to install the 3. This helps me with the two things I wanted to do which are the um, deleting of the rear ballasts and the option to add auto headlights on the front. Um, so I'm going to get that 8mm out of there. I'll pull the LCM down and out and we can see what that one looks like. So that's your 8mm that holds the LCM in. You take that out and then you fight with the wires a little bit. There's not much wiring on this thing. Like this is as far away from the car as I can get it. Uh, but we see this is actually the top that would be kind of up here. And there's no screw up there. It's just this horseshoe little open tab that slides into a metal clip up there. And that's the only thing that holds it at the top. The bottom is a closed hole and that's where we just extracted that 8mm bolt from. So once you do that, bring it down as far as you can and then just slide it around the insulation, sound insulation and the carpeting until you get beautiful access to the three connectors like this. And these are very typical BMW connectors. If you've removed modules or any electronics from this car before, you probably already know how to do these. Uh, so the middle one is your typical swing arm. There's a little tab that you press and then the arm swings out like that and that releases the entire connector. The bottom one, as you can see, wants to slide down about an inch. And as you slide it down an inch, these channels push it away from the module and it will free itself. The top one is the white one and it slides up about an inch. And same thing as the bottom, it'll push itself away. Then we've removed the old module. Now before you do that, it is highly recommended to disconnect the battery in the trunk. So in the M5, you have to move these packages. The battery is under beautiful carpeting and under this little door. And it's just a 10 millimeter nut holding the negative terminal. So release the 10 mil, take that out of there and then close the door so it doesn't reattach before removing the LCM. So this is the LCM 3.0 is what it says on the sticker that I just removed. And the production date on this, here's how you can actually tell the production date. So I'll move this thing over to some light and the hole that goes at the bottom where the 8 mil was, there's a little build stamp right below that. See how it says double O in the middle? And then the arrow points to either the 12 or the 1, but I'm pretty sure they're meaning the 1 here. So that means it was made the first month of the year 2000. If yours says 7 and then uh, like 04, that would mean July of 2004. Well, my car was manufactured in February 2000, so it makes sense that this is a January 2000 module. The one we're putting in was made September of 01, and the car that it came from is this top VIN tag right here which is an 1101, so that makes perfect sense. So I disconnected the battery, removed the connectors on the old one, plugged them into the new one. A little tip when removing the white one at the top and the big black one at the bottom is to use a small flathead screwdriver like this to get them started. So if I were doing it again, I would insert the screwdriver there at the top, like this, and then pry like that, just a little bit, just so this connector starts to move up. Once it starts to move up, you can grab it, just pull it up, and then it detaches itself from the module. Same thing here at the bottom, although the screwdriver would go in the bottom, and you could pry either way at the bottom, and then it will detach. So before I uh, spend some time um, upside down, on my back, in a hot, sweaty car cockpit, feeding this thing back in there, I'm going to code, program, and fully test this thing. So the first step will be to reconnect the battery now that it's plugged in. Alrighty, with the battery plugged back in, we can go ahead and get in the car, flip the key to position number two. That's the one where everything lights up and the needles move, but the engine doesn't start. You get a few dings, turn off your climate control, turn off the radio. If you've got nav, come over here and do monitor off. We're gonna need it in position two for a while. Let's not kill the battery. Um, if you have a battery charger, a trickle charger that you can plug in somewhere, go ahead and do it. Um, I'm gonna turn off the radar detector, in fact, we don't need that. So the first thing we notice, looking at the instrument cluster now, is that that tamper dot is illuminated right below miles. You see that little orange circle? 
So that's not good. That will stay on until we program the light module. I don't know if the light module works. I assume that it would, even with the tamper dot on. It's just telling us that the mileage has been tampered with. Um, so module's plugged in, keys in position two. We're gonna move over to the diagnostics machine right now. So launch Windows, launch PA Soft, whatever you're gonna use. This car is a 2000, so I have the round port I have daytime running lights now. That's important to note. Whatever LCM you put on, you inherit all of that coding data that's in there. So that car uh, that I've robbed the LCM from must have had daytime running lights on, which is one filament inside the um, high beams that to me looks like hell. So we'll be turning that off shortly. A 2000 car has this round port under the hood on the passenger side front strut tower. If you have that port, you have to use it. Unless you want to bridge pins, it's, that's a mess. Just use it if you have it. If you don't, you're going to be using the OBD2 port on the driver's side, uh, kind of by your left foot up under the dashboard. So for me, I have to go from the round connector to OBD2. That's the first adapter. This is the BMW Scanner 1.4. Then we go from a USB-B, I think, the round or the square USB, to USB 2.0. And then from USB 2.0 to USB-C because this is a Mac and Apple hates programmers. So we plug that in, launch the VM, I have to authenticate and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, we're gonna do a screen recording now. It's just gonna use the MacBook Pro microphone so it probably doesn't sound great, but bear with me. So we're gonna launch PASoft BMW Scanner 1.4. This always takes a moment. First thing we hit is continue and we always get this hardware not ready thing. It's the most finicky software I've ever dealt with. So check all the connections, make sure everything's tight, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're in. Had to check uh, connections and move the USB cable, but this is fine. So the first screen is the information about the car. It tells us the mileage, the odometer here in kilometers is measured by the cluster, and this module over here. So it's 333,164 kilometers. So we're gonna need to screenshot or otherwise remember that because that's what we're going to program to the new LCM. Uh, we can also see option codes and other information about the car. Let's hit close. Now we go to units and LCM. First thing we're gonna do here is click on change algorithm. View support list. And notice the one in blue. This is the part number that corresponds with what's in the car. It ends in 454. Here, uh, the HW, that's hardware level C1, software level 43. All of this has to match. If yours doesn't match, you have to find the one. The part number is kind of irrelevant. You're looking for the hardware and software uh, level. Then this MCU-IDNR, this is the algorithm that we need to use, which is HC11PH8. So we click on close and know that that's the one selected. If we click on the arrows, it'll move around, but we want that to be black, uh, indicating that that's the correct algorithm for the module. So we click on close. Next, we click on reprogramming. Then we're gonna write FGSTNR, that is the VIN. So we click that, now type in the last seven digits of your car's VIN, which for me are BZ95540. I'm going to click OK. It's going to write that data to the module. And there we go. So we'll notice now, up at the top, that's now in black, indicating that it's not a problem anymore. The next thing we need to do is the odometer. So we go back to reprogramming. We click on Write Odometer. So I'm going to type in zero. This will allow the module to just go and ask another module what the odometer is and copy and paste it and move it in for you. You can also just type in whatever it said on the initial screen. It's going to write those changes to the odometer and then we should be set. Now we're set. So we click OK. Now there's 11 errors in here. These are errors from the previous car that they were in. Uh, I'm just going to clear all that. The one that was in red will come back and it makes sense. There's a communication issue with the RLS and that's because I don't have an RLS, it's an RS right now. So that error will be there. It's not gonna trigger a check engine light or anything. Uh, that error is just gonna be saved inside the module until I um, install an RLS when I get a new windshield at some point. Um, so now if we wanna do any coding, we click on coding data, we can look at light coding and this is where we're gonna be able to turn off daytime running lights by unchecking that box. And then I have screenshots that I took yesterday on my previous module that I will just match this up to uh, what it is on my LCM3 that I just removed. So I've matched up the settings that I had on the other one. It's important to note here, if you have retrofit rear fog lights to your car, you can turn on or off the check controls for those right here. If you turn these controls on and you don't have rear fog lights, every time you turn on the car, it's gonna tell you to check your rear fog lights. That would be horribly annoying. If you retrofit the rear fog lights and you leave those unchecked, now if one of the bulbs goes out, you won't hear about it. So I have rear fogs, so I'm just gonna check the boxes. Then we're gonna click on right, we're gonna click on yes, 
and it's going to write those changes to the light control module. Now my car right now, you can't see it, but it's got the lights flashing, it's dinging inside, this is all normal when writing a module. So we're going to click OK there. We can also go back to coding data and then check slash control messages. And uh, we're going to want to align this to whatever settings we want as well. So I've aligned this with how I had it set before. I'll click right again. That right was really quick, although the lights did flash once and a few dings inside the car. So the coding aspect should now be done. We can quit the application and I'll switch back to the better camera. Coding's done. We're back on the DSLR and we're back inside the car. So the first thing we notice looking at the cluster is that the tamper dot is still on. So let's go ahead and take the key, cycle it all the way to zero, off, and then cycle it back to position two. We'll notice that the dot illuminated and then went out. It did the check again, and this time it saw that the LCM has the correct mileage coded and the correct VIN coded. So the tamper dot issue is fixed. At this point, very, very thoroughly check all of the lights. Check the brake lights, check the hazard lights, put it in reverse, the fog lights, the turn signals, the hazards. Check everything and make sure it's what you expect. Honestly, probably the worst part of this job here is just reinstalling the light control module. Uh, it's just tight. There's not much wire here. Um, it is important to note next to the 8 millimeter nut or bolt that we've taken out, um, as you put it back in, there's a wire clip there, and you probably already discovered that when you removed it. As many wires as you can fit in there, just go ahead and shove in there. It's not nearly big enough to hold the whole loom, but go ahead and do that. Bolt it back up in there. Um, the open horseshoe looking piece goes at the top as we talked about before and then it just slides into a, a little metal clip and you'll feel it you got to guide it around a little bit and then push and it'll kind of spring and then stop with a nice solid thud as it clicks in there and then as you rotate the LCM back down to the chassis uh, the hole will line up with the uh, threads in the chassis for that eight millimeter screw to go back in so we've done that the screws tight the wires are tight uh, the carpet's gonna go back like this it will it will be held in by that black plastic uh, panel that goes here with the curve. That's going to be the first one we put on. You can feel for the for the hole in the chassis right here, and then you can actually see the second hole right here, the round one. So we're going to put that piece back on. Then we can line up our three uh, plastic pieces here and smack that down into place, and then slide the um, ceiling for the passenger's uh, footwell ceiling back in. So we fast forward a few weeks and here we have the adapters to replace the ballasts for the rear tail lights. Now I ordered these originally through BMW of Escondido here in California and they were like $34 for $35 a piece and they said they'd be in in about 10 business days. I got a call an hour later and uh, they said that BMW of Germany would not sell them to anybody in the United States unless we could prove that they're going on a E39 that is a European car, so a DE91, a, a DE92, the other you know European or rest of world cars, not the DE93 North American cars. And that car has to be registered currently here in the United States. Well, that's not the case with my car. It's a U.S. car, and it's registered in the U.S., uh, but it's not a Europe car. So they wouldn't sell them to me. They refunded me, and I had to go on eBay and buy these for a little bit more money, all the way from Lithuania, and they took about two weeks to get here. So we got the adapters. They appear to be genuine BMW components in this packaging. Um, I'm not sure if that's a date. If it is, or this is here, 9919. So there's a right and a left, and the part numbers are here in the front. And we've got 63120025517 for the left. And the right side is 63120026771. Um, odd for a right part number to be an odd number, but that's the way it is. So I'm going to unpackage them. We'll get a better look and then installation. Here we are, just basic adapters. You could totally make these things if you wanted to buy some pins and some wiring and uh, these two harnesses. So the part on the left there, that's what's gonna plug into our facelift taillights. The part on the right will plug into the old style 2000 and earlier taillight vehicle harness. And note that there are six wires and six pins. Every pin here is populated. And then we've got six out of eight. That's just the way they designed the connector. Uh, so six pins will allow us to continue using rear fog lights. If for some reason they only had five, I would assume that the rear fog light uh, pin isn't there. But since these are a Europe um, part for some reason, uh, of course they have rear fog lights. So I'm going to take the ballasts out of the car, plug these in, and we'll test things. Okay, the first problem. So the adapters from Lithuania here do not fit in the taillights, which is super annoying. Um, if we compare it to the ballast, this is the ballast I just removed from the car. The end of the connector there, see right in the middle, there's kind of a slot. You can see my finger through it. Well, on these adapters, that's solid. 
and it runs into a little plastic peg right there in the middle in between pins three and four on the top. So maybe that's why they say they don't work in the U.S. Now, this isn't my taillight. This is just a generic um, U.S. spec hella facelift taillight. So that's annoying. So here's what I'm going to try to do. Um, really, just the plastic piece needs to change. So I'm going to depin it from here, take all these pins out, figure out how that white cover comes off, press the tab, slide the pins out. Uh, press the tabs there, slide the pins out of the adapter, and just switch the black plastic part, because I know this fits. That's been in there for years. So I'll move this over here. And uh, that should work. Talk about annoying. So the pins that are in the ballast, which I just depinned over here, are oh so slightly different than the pins that are in the adapter, which means you can't just swap the black plastic housing without modifying it in ways that I am not capable of modifying it. I mean, you, you, you can't. So the problem is on these taillights, right in the middle, that little peg I showed you in between pins three and four, well, it looks like that. And if you break it out of there with good old trusty flathead screwdriver, then the uh, adapter fits right in. And I don't see what benefit or value that stupid peg adds. It doesn't do anything for the adapters. Obviously, it prevents them from fitting. And it didn't do anything on the ballast slash original BMW wiring harness that's in the car. It's just there. So if you stick a screwdriver in and you break it off cleanly at the bottom, very carefully as not to damage this whole thing, then you can just plug the adapters right in. Ballast deletes done. Here they are. We took at least a half a pound out of the car. It's going to double my zero to 60 time or cut it in half rather. Um, if anybody wants these, I'll make them available. They work fine. Uh, I just put the, the uh, LCM 3B in in these uh, most recent clips here and uh, that I could do away with them. And, and that is the case if you're willing to oh so slightly modify your taillights by getting rid of those useless black little plastic pegs. So now that it's in there, I went ahead and put the key in position two and tested all the lights, brake lights, reverse lights, rear fog lights, signals, um, the little LED bars, everything works beautifully. No control or no check control warnings on the dashboard inside. Everything's good. So that's how to uh, delete the ballasts. Um, on a 2000 E39 that you retrofit the taillights to. I've got a vacuum in there a little bit, but um, that's what the connection looks like now. Just a clean adapter going from the, uh, the facelift taillight right into the factory wiring harness. So probably not worth your time, but if you're doing the LCM and you've got the ballasts, you might as well tidy it up and get rid of that. So thanks for watching. Please leave any comments or questions down below. Feel free to email me, ryan at e39source.com, and I'll talk to you guys in the next source video. Take care.